All right, so we're back another day here with Dave, the man. We're going to be taking apart the, uh, what are we doing today? We're cam, be, take out the cam. Yeah, we're going to be doing a cam change today. We're going to change your piston jet gaskets. And we'll see if we get the head valve springs. We'll nice. I think it's very important to come over here, John. Yeah, so as you guys remember from the last video. It's very important to change the gaskets on these piston jets. Because early on in Milwaukee, they were becoming loose, and then they would start dumping oil down. That was a lot of parts, reasons mm. why they were having something issues. Oh, okay. So I packed the cylinder with rags really around it really tight. And we'll take these out, we'll clean them, we'll actually sand these a little bit to make them flat. Mm. Change these gaskets, lock time, and retorque them. And hopefully that makes them last a lot longer. Awesome. Better. Yeah, so from the last video, Dave tore basically the entire motor, the cylinders, the heads off, throttle body, gas tank, obviously, seat, and uh, now we'll get going with the rest of it. Yep. So I use a swivel, a little Torx, and you have to have little hands, which I don't. <laughs> but I always keep I have a piece of wire, I'll show you what I use that for, a little magnet. Because if this falls down in the case, well, and then you're pulling your case apart. Right. And you have to be careful that that gas doesn't slip and fall down either. Mm -hmm. So it's a little tedious. So definitely, like you said, pack it with rags or shirt. Yeah, and keep a little magnet right by the screw when you're taking it out. I'm trying to do this and so you guys can see it. Keep the magnet there so I carry it right out of the way. Right. Yeah, one time I was doing a set of these in the took out the last screw and I, the gaskets are normally stuck to one side and it just had dropped oh. right down. And it, <laughs> bam. Fortunately, I was able to reach down with a magnet because uh, there's a little metal in that gasket and it oh, grabbed wow. it. But I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm tearing this thing down in the case. But it worked out all right. And the later motors don't seem to be as bad as the earlier motors with these loosening up. Mm -hmm. But still, we're here. We're gonna do it. Now what I normally do is I take my pick, which is not here. I'm gonna hook it in there. Just in case that gasket wants to drop down on me. Pull this out. Use your piston jack. And I'll show you why they have a problem. See how loose that gasket was? Yeah. Now if you look on here. <clears throat> you can see that? That's mm -hmm. an adhesive strip that Harley puts on the gasket. Huh. It loses its seal. Check that. Unbelievable. So if you use the Harley gaskets, I use Kometics. Okay. Peel that strip off. Uh-huh. Before you put the gasket in. Gotcha. So that like just blows out after a while? Yeah, it just leaks. It just starts leaking. Mm. So I'm going to take the thing this sanding block over here. Mm -hmm. um, I'll sand them. This is a machine flat plate under here. So it's what, just to make the surface smooth See how again? it's not flat yet? Yeah, right, right. Also, this way you get a good seat on it. Right. Uh -huh. I'm making it flat. We do everything That's we can. That's a very good tip. Yeah, we do everything we can to try and keep these buggers sealed up. Right. And that's going to help to keep the motor from sumping, work a lot better, and keep you on now the road. Explain to it uh, something for people that don't know what it is. What something is, is when the oil pump loses the ability to remove the oil from the crankcase. Mm -hmm. So, kind of the best way to think about it is, you ever use a paddle boat in the lake? And right. you're paddling with the, and you can feel the resistance of the water paddling right. through there. Right. Well, that's essentially what happens. When your crankcase fills with oil, that crank is trying to move through all that oil, right. which slows it down, restricts it, and, it, and that's called something. Hmm. The oil pump has a scavenge port, which pulls that oil out. 
so it only keeps a certain amount in there. And when that fails, it fills up with oil, and now we have that problem. Mm. And well, then what, what's the damage that could be created from that? Well, if you don't pull over and shut your bike off, you can blow the thing up. Oh. Because you'll overheat it, it'll cook it. Right. And a lot of people just ruin their motors. You know, so it's... um. And a lot of times it happens while steady state cruising down the highway for people. Mm -hmm. 70, 80 miles per hour, just cruising more along the road, and next thing you know, the thing loses power and gets hot. And so that's, and off, that's it. So, yeah. <laughs> so, but oh, it's, it's been great. a lot better with these latest oil pumps. And yes, and yes, and fueling pumps have corrected it. Mm -hmm. you know, so we really don't hear about it as much anymore. Mm -hmm. So now that we got this clean, You know, people go crazy about me not wearing gloves. <laughs> Just wait. But now that's nice and clean. You're old school, dude. Come on. Right? Yeah, I'm old fashioned. You're not a doctor? No, I'm not. <laughs> Just a guy trying to make it happen. That's right. <laughs> I'll show you where that little piece of wire comes in that I have here. It pays to be extra paranoid when working with these because you don't want to drop things in the crankcase. <clears throat> now we're going to flush these holes out. stuff in there. And what is that? This is brake clean. Hmm. Brake parts cleaner. <clears throat> this is to get all the oil and any other, anything else out of that hole. So we can get a good seal with our lock tight. So you've seen the screws back out, you say? Yeah. yeah. Yep, they back out. Well, actually, they don't back out. They're a self-tapping kind of screw. When they're installed from the manufacturer, right. they'll, they'll set the torque before they fully seat. Uh, That's one of the theories that happens. And plus, the other theory is that this gasket just loses its seal. Oh, right, so okay. There's, there's a bunch of theories on why it really fails. Mm -hmm. but that's kind of a bunch of them. Okay. I will do take my gasket a piece of wire here down here I don't want to use that hole I'm gonna stick it in there and that's to help keep that gasket from wanting aligned, to, right? yeah to align it and help keep it from wanting to disappear <clears throat> inside the current case very good idea because that's not what I want to have happen Get some lock tightening screws This is blue Loctite, by the way, not red. Mm -hmm. Have my magnet handy. What's up, buddy? Nobody's gonna help out. <laughs> now let's see. Get this started. not tight yet. This is a harder part. If I had a little small hand, it'd be easier. I don't. Now that we got the screws in place, I want to make sure the rag is not under my gasket. Let's still keep it there in case the screw head breaks and who knows what happens. Right. Then we're going to torque these. There we 
go. There we go. That's good. Now we get to do the front. Now we're going to remove these lifter covers. And one thing you want to do when you work on these is like I said, keep trying to get the dirt blowing out of these things because they get a lot of dirt in these little crevices. Just be careful not to get it in the motor. The more you take them apart, the more it kind of sheds down and drops away. Nice sea stuff to hang out. You know? yeah. It's amazing how much dirt gets collected in these as you ride around. Right. We'll remove these and get the lifters out of the way because we're going to put tappet cuffs in here. the tap of cuffs on this mm -hmm. and again on most cam jobs it's really not the end of the world if you don't replace those I haven't seen any break for these plastic guides uh-huh from the Loctite? Yeah. Well, that will be cleaning out of there. Careful with these bolts. They're tight. And they're not very strong. Now you had a you had some snap mm. or not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'm locking on some wood. Yeah. <laughs> but I am careful with them. They All do right. they do have some resistance on them. So it is a little nerve-wracking. Right. That's why a lot of times I don't use impacts to tear. I was just going to say, right, because then you don't know, you don't can't feel the pressure on them. That's right. Next thing you know, it's just spin in your hand, and you got a bolt and broken, a broken bolt in your block. <laughs> Took me two times to say that. <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. So you can replace that with. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tap of cuff will replace that. Okay. And what does that uh, pretty much do? That is an aluminum block, or this here is a plastic block, which keeps the lifters from rotating. Mm -hmm. See how they're rotating now? Right. And with that, see the roller lifter. Right. And if they rotate, well, now you just cut your cam up. Gotcha. So that's why it's important. Mm -hmm. So the ones you're going to replace with are aluminum? Yeah, yeah, the built aluminum that S and S makes. Mm -hmm. They call them the tappet cuffs. Less chance of breaking, like you said, right? Yeah, and like I said, I haven't seen any failures yet, but why not? They're yeah. sixty some bucks. Right, right. Mm -hmm. 
same lifters going in or no? Yeah, these are good S&S mm -hmm. lifters. We yeah. just put them in last year. Right, right. I see no need to replace them. I mean, if I look at them closely and I see any marks or wearing, we'll definitely replace them. You gotcha. underneath the magnifying glass too. So now we're going to get in on this side, huh? That's right. We pull the can. Pull that. Now to try to gently blow some of this stuff away. Yeah, I see all the... Yep. It's amazing how much debris comes out when you work on these. Holds everything in place, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do here first is we're gonna put some paper under there. Okay. So keep all the oil from oozing all over your wiring and stuff. Gotcha. That's why I save all these instruction sheets for. <laughs> They're good for something, right? That's right. Absorbent oil deflectors. Mm -hmm. And good information when you need it. Crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta love it. This tool. Yeah. Oh yeah. How's that for old school? Sure. I think it's probably from the fifties. See a lot of old Speed wrench? Stuff. Yeah. Air's expensive these days. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yep, it's been in my box for a long, long time. <laughs> hey, it works. That's right. My favorite tools. Thousands of bolts that spun in and out. They'll work even when the power goes out. That's right. <laughs> Here comes our ooze. So now replacing the um, the stock oil pump mm -hmm. and the cam plate and stuff like that. So just tell everybody why you recommend doing that. Why we didn't do it like last time. Say when we did the stage two on it. Because with the general cam upgrade, the stock oil pump is more than adequate. Right. You know, but with the, since we're going with a much bigger board, there's going to be a lot more pressures inside of this crankcase. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're going with the S and S. But like I said, the, the 131s and the latest oil pump has been kind of holding up with those. Uh -huh. So, but just for added insurance, I want that extra scavenging ability. Gotcha. Yes, okay. yes. Got that. Here's your cam, your cam sprockets, your chain, your tensioner. All that stuff is fine. Nice. So we're gonna come right on out.
because of my clean track, my inside track. So you use one tray for outside, like you said, and one tray for inside, right? Yep. Well, the less dirt we get over everything, the less cleaning we have to do, and the less chance of blowing dirt into something we're going to do. All right. together so I can get these bolts out. Special tool? Yep. Yeah. Will you be removing the cam today or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll be up very, very shortly. Very shortly. Welcome comes the sprockets. It's a little trick I do, John. It's a little piece of shim stock that I put in a sprocket. Mm -hmm. I can sell you a $50 sprocket. Mm -hmm. That takes this wiggleness out. Oh, okay. Buy your shim stock and it don't cost you nothing. Oh, gotcha. Cool. That's one of my little things I've been doing for years with these, these and the twin cams. Because the parts are so out of control on this stuff anymore, it's just right, right. You got to find some way to try and help people out and make it more affordable. And the parts keep going up and up and up. That's why I tell you guys, this guy's the best. Come on down and check them out. Thank you, John. All right, we're gonna leave your old oil pump on there because we're not gonna use it again. In the hardware, we have new hardware for the new oil pump. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to take off anyway. I'm going to show you guys. Think they put enough bolts in there? <laughs> yep. <laughs> they don't want to fall out. Now we'll get some more oil coming out. Here's your cam plate, here's your cam shim. That's for setting the spacing of the sprocket so it's aligned with the bottom sprocket. Mm -hmm. This you have to measure, make sure we use the correct thickness to keep those aligned. Gotcha. Here is your original cam plate. Original oil plate. Yeah, if you could show us like the difference. Yeah. There's the cam. There's the cam. Good old S and S four seventy five. <laughs> yep, it's a workhorse. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta find someone, someone here that needs this. Uh -huh. I think I, I, it might have a home. Some uh, military guy, active duty in Louisiana, actually reached out to me. So that, I might send it to him for free. That'd be a great thing. Yeah. Yep. That's a great thing. And that's what I was thinking of. I have a friend who is a military guy. He got into an accident last year, but he ended up buying a twin cam. Yeah. If we can help someone out, yeah, that's yeah. good. So the guy actually reached out to me and said, uh, obviously military pay isn't good for any of you guys that were in the military. You guys know that military pay sucks. Yeah. So I might help them out. We're going yeah. kind of back and forth now Great. through emails. So we'll see. Excellent. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I can help them out. Yeah, yeah. definitely. That would be a great thing to do.
give him some more kick, and he just has to figure out how to round up the rest of the parts for his bike. Yeah, yeah right. Maybe he can make kind of a... But a little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah. That'd be can you show thing. us the difference on that? Sure. The cam, you're not going to see really a whole lot of difference. It's still a piece of metal with lumps on it. Also, like the uh, the cam plate to the compared to the S and S and the pump and stuff. Yep. And essentially, from looking at from the eye, they're gonna look pretty much identical. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look closely, you can kind of see the different lobe sizing. Right. If you really stare at it, you can see. Right. And these lobe sizes and shapes, and there's a lot of a lot of science that goes into designing these. Right. You know, so it's not just lumps on a stick. Mm. No, it's every little bit. Which one was the TTS? This one here. Uh huh. Yep. Every little degree, every little. Also, the TTS actually is uh, higher. Oh yeah, it's bigger cam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, much bigger cam, much different timing. Mm hmm. And that's why it reacts the way it does. Gotcha. This here we can send in that box. Yeah, just make a little goodie pile for me. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We'll get that. We'll pull out the oil pump. There we go. Let this drain for a minute. That there's the most important O ring in your bike. Mm -hmm. When putting these pumps on, I always put the O ring on the pump mm -hmm. on a twin cam. But in Milwaukee 8, I put them in first because this is sharp edge here. Oh, so this way you don't cut it. I think a lot of problems is people end up cutting them. Wow. You know, when they're putting a pump in. Gotcha. So that's kind of two different ways I do it. Milwaukee 8, O-ring in case, twin cam, O-ring on oil pump. Gotcha. You know, so. Good tip. And that's things I found. I mean, this is stuff that... You guys got a lot of good tips here that you need to pay for, so you got them for free. That's right. I'll expect a check. <laughs> <laughs> but this is stuff I found that helps me. <clears throat> you know, everyone's different. Right. Everyone's gonna have a different opinion, but this is what I've found that helps Sure, me absolutely. Out. So we can come on over here to this we'll put over here. Look that. Here's our oil pump. Cut this loose. You want to keep them? No. You can kind of see here. You can see the different sizes of the, the gear rotors in here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the design of it is really a lot to do with it. This is this has two. This the oil SNS pump has three different gear rotors. Oh. Wow. You no, know, this is for your crankcase, this is for your cam chest, this is for your oil pressure. So definitely uh, an upgrade. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they work very good. But it's expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, when someone's trying to barely afford a cam upgrade, a lot of times that's the difference between I can do a cam or not. Right, right, right. And if this works just fine. Right. That's why we, I mean, yeah. left it when you did the cam for me, right? Right. Because you don't see any real issues. No, this, this was uh, the latest number. Mm -hmm. I can go against B, one of the later numbers. It's still not a bad pump, but we're going to upgrade it. Awesome. Now the cam plate, you can see here, you can see the difference of how precise this is machined out. It has nice bronze bushings in there, which is a lot more durable than just aluminum. Very nice. So that's the whole trick of that. It's stronger. It's going to support things better with less deflection. Great. Go from there. Okay. Now we're going to measure the run out on the crank and see how it looks after a year of fun excitement. <laughs> you don't remember what it was last time, right? No, right? No, but I usually don't write it down, but if it's a problem, I call you. Usually they're around. I think I was here. Well, um, I mean, yeah, I think so. It might be on a past video with my other gauge. So let's Because we were, we were going to go to a gear drive, remember? Yep. And, uh, 
So we have. What's that? Five thousands. Yep. Five thousands. Five almost six. Which is not bad. Uh -huh. Harley specs, and that's why we cannot use a gear drive. It's over three thousands. Oh, so it's already over. Yep, and they all are. Right, right, right. And that's why I don't understand why they're pushing gear drives for stock cranks. So when you did when you did the stage two, mm -hmm. we remember we were I was I actually had the four seventy five gear drive cam. Yeah. yeah. But then you did the run out. It was good. It was yeah. it was within tolerance. But you said don't do it. Right. Yeah. Right. Because they do move a little bit. But again, after a whole year of this. And you, so you don't recommend still going with the gear drive? As, no. 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 I mean, the other problem with the gear drive is they will make more noise. Right. You will hear more clattering. Right, right. You know, but it does give more precise timing. It is more durable, but, you know, you got to weigh out your options. Right. You know, if you have a custom crank built. Right. Where it's going to keep its, uh, its true down to 1,000th or 2,000th, right. it's right. okay. Because if this crank ever gets the run out is way more, then you're just going to blow that gears right up. Yeah. You're going to chew them up. Yeah. Yep. It's going to make a mess. Right. And the chain never. No. So you're kind of give and take a little bit. Yeah. The but in the long run, the chain's always better. Yeah. The yeah. chain's more forgiving. Yeah. I mean, it's, I haven't seen them shatter, so I'm not afraid of them. So we replaced this bearing in the past last year. You want? I can. Maybe we'll, she'll replace it again. Put a fresh one in there for you, just to show everybody how to do that. I'll pull that out. Maybe sure. You're old. You're gonna replace that cam bearing, right? Yep. Okay. Replace this and update it from the, the standard Harley bearing every time we do this. But since we're doing this, we're gonna show you guys how to do it. Put a fresh one in for the for the new cam. basically a puller right yep this pulls a bearing out and I turned the big nut instead of rotating the inside because I don't want to be rotating against that bearing as I'm pulling it right because I don't want to blow it up right right that'll make a mess I'll have to pull the whole motor apart ruin our day That we can show you. Then I'll go grab another new one. Let me get that in there. The, the Torrington has rollers in every spot. Mm -hmm. Where the factory Harley bearing has a roller and a little plastic spacer between every one. Oh, okay. So that, that's already an upgraded bearing? Yeah, this is the one I put in last year. Gotcha, trip. okay. So we're going to put another new one in though. Nice. Everything will be fresh. <laughs> As you guys could see, that Dave, he doesn't cut any corners. Um, you know, the bike's torn down, just like the bearing. He just replaced it, actually, last year when the other cam, the 475, was put in. But he's going to replace it anyway. So that's just the type of guy he is and the type of work that he does. All right, so you're gonna. All right, so we got a new bearing new here. One. I put some oil on already. Always turn it 
you look at the bearing, that side's flat. Right. That side's radius. The radius goes in. Very important. In towards the motor, right? Yep. Okay. That helps it lead in real good. Oh, getting caught up on the, the bearing. So now you're driving that bearing back yep. in, right? You're driving right in there. You're gonna know like how when it stops, right? Obviously, yeah. Yeah. right there. That's it. It stops on the case. Gotcha. But when I take it off, I'm gonna show you something to look for. You always want to make sure that bearing is seated correctly in the case. Mm. If it's not in deep enough, you, the cam is going to have pressure put on against the gotcha. cam plate. So it's slightly recessed? Yeah. That's where it needs to be. Okay, gotcha. Oh, uh, then problem. problem. All right. One thing to make sure is always make sure we blow the bolt holes out. Mm. See that? Yeah. That could compress. That could compress the bolt as you tighten it in. Blow the case out. So that's very important. And it'll never pretty much be torqued properly, right? That's correct. It won't yeah. be torqued right. Nice and clean. <laughs> yep, ready for the new cam. So it's um, excellent. It's getting all the rings and stuff out. Right, here's our O rings for the new oil pump and the can plate. I'm gonna stick that in the case. So like you said before, you're just gonna put it in now, right? Yep. Got a really sharp edge in that case. <laughs> Make sure it's seated really good. I'm gonna put some lube around there and get the oil pump prepped. Yep, see it. We'll clean this out, because don't trust anybody. <laughs> Right, I mean, they, it's all machine parts, right? Yep. I mean. yep, and they work to make it clean, but it only takes one more piece of dirt to ruin the whole thing. Right now, she'll get a seal. Now, to give us this nice Torco lube, which we're going to use, very good breaking lube. Assembly That's lube. lubrication? Yep. Yeah, really nice assembly lube. Okay. See how that's flat on that side? Mm -hmm. That side's got an indent. Right. The indent goes towards the inside of the motor. That is for where the machined area on the crank to seat into. Gotcha. You put it like this, it could actually push on this and have the pump jammed up against the cam plate gotcha. and ruin it. Okay. Very important. That faces in towards the inside of the motor. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> right there's the Odie. What do you think, Odie? Let's see if I'm out of here.
This doesn't matter which way mm -hmm. it goes. A little lube's your friend here. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go get another seal for that. New seal. Let's see, that should stay put in there. A little lube will do you good. <clears throat> so now new oil pump going in, S and S. Yep, new oil pump going in. And that's that area on the crank I told you to beware with that inner gear rotor. All right. Contacting. Okay. Mm-hmm. So gotcha. Now, let's see. All right, so now you put it in, right? Yep. And you just in. put another O-ring in? Yep, right and make sure it's flush with the case there. I see That's that, That's how you know right. it's in there. Mm -hmm. And now I'll get the next gear. Put you in too. Oh boy. <laughs> Don't snag. Mind mind. You're snagged. <laughs> What's up, brother? How you, How you doing? Good. Yeah, you're what? I don't know yet. Oh. Uh, have to let me know later. On paper, it looks good. <laughs> He's gonna know how it looks on, ro on the road now. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty I of loot. I could have done what you did with the money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had we had some we had some, we had some challenges with with Steve's yeah. bike, but we got them solved. There we go, perfect. The master solved. Them. It was it was a challenging day and a challenging thing. Here we go. We got the camo lubed up, ready to head on in there, and now we're gonna get a cam plate. I use plenty of this lube here. No comment. On the lube, though. Lube's tripping a little bit. I figured you'd catch on that, John. You're going to clean that up, right? <laughs> no, we're going to leave everything. Yeah, just, just roll out of here with that. It'll dry. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't even started it yet? You don't, huh? No, I just uh, heard him on the dyno yesterday and he, he uh, was fine tuning everything, but I didn't Oh, you were him. here when he was on the dyno? Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, well, I called him up when we had problems. <laughs> and that's what I didn't want to hear. I saw the phone. I was like, it's either done or there's a problem. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Cause, we gotta, cause like he, I said, I can, I can tune around a lot of it, but his was so far out. I Houston, said, we have a problem. <laughs> I said, it's, it, I know what you're looking for. You weren't going to be happy. Yeah. You know? And I'm glad, I'm glad that you, you do that and you don't mask something and you just say, well, here, this is all I got. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're right. shit out of luck. This is. Right. Yeah. I try to, it's, it's a mission. It's kind of a difficult balance sometimes. All right. So here we are. We get some good lube on this cam plate. Silly question, but. Color options on these plates now, right? They don't. It no, comes no. in blue. It's blue. <laughs> Not that it matters. Yeah, blue is red. I think fueling a lot of stuff. The stuff is red. Nice. Like this is SNS likes the blue color. But you're never gonna see it ever again, hopefully. So the cam was easy. Yep, Just cam cam's in. installed. The lifters are not installed. Now, if we still had the stock cuffs in there, we could have the lifters still hanging in there. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna put them in from the top. We got gotcha. traffic cuffs. That's and then in. you'll balance, later, uh, time everything, right, mm -hmm. later. Yep, you'll see all that. Cool. 
this goes this goes on here okay now I'm going to show you what I do next that's our food Comes in new bolts, or you have to use the same ones? The oil pump does come with new bolts, the mm -hmm. outside bolts, and it can't play we reuse. Okay. So I'm going to go clean. And then we'll lock time and install them. Loctite, by the way, either. Otherwise, bit, right? yeah. Otherwise, they'll end up dripping between the, the contact mm -hmm. surfaces and make more problems. Gotcha. Just a little bit's just fine. Okay, watch that sucker. That means it's time for me to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Four long ones in the inside, right? And then mm -hmm. the... Yep. Let me go clean this. Warming out up there. Yeah. It's almost showtime. I'm not going to tighten these down all the way. Reason? What I do is I rotate the crank and uh -huh. let it help center any little bit of movement it can. Oh, to, gotcha, gotcha. To make up for that misalignment. Gotcha, that makes sense. Super important. So it's not tight on one spot and loose on the other? Right. Yeah. Especially on twin cams. But every, every one, you got to let the oil pump and the cam plate center itself before so, you get to uh -huh. work it. Plate. So that's a TTS, what number? 250. 250, TTS 250 nice. cam. That's the one I like for these motors. Now we're going to do the oil pump. So just so people know, we're gonna end at this uh, next next time I'm back. Basically, what you're gonna have the uh, cylinders, pistons. Yep, we'll have that. And we'll do it. So we'll go over all the parts when you have them next time, right? Mm-hmm. Then we'll start putting it uh, top back together. Yep. And who knows? Maybe we'll even get her fired up. <laughs> Let's see how the day goes. Hey. So we're going to measure this offset, which really is not that scientific, to be honest with you. Come on. It's a little tricky to get on there. So 
sometimes they're a little snug to get started on there. Collins are so tight, right? Yeah. And they slide right on, but it's just... And that is where it needs to be. Oh, it went on. I missed it. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, it was pretty fast. Yeah, I was looking at you, walk away, and I said, oh, he's got it. That's all. That's why I went on, because he looked away. Yeah. <laughs> so in essence, you want to just make sure that they are mm -hmm. the same thickness. Let me, let me show you. Yeah. Lighting in here is horrible. That's on the, that's on the wish list, is new lighting for the mm -hmm. building. You can see it's pretty darn parallel. Right. And that's the shim I changed last year. Mm -hmm. So that there's good to go. There's no reason need to really torque these all down. You hold them flat, flat mm -hmm. as flat, you know. Gotcha. So now we're going to put the chain on. And then before we go over this, we'll make sure we show you how we torque it. Go around the oil pump. And around the cam plate. These are getting torqued 118 inch pounds. 118? Yep. Okay. And you have specific torque procedures and how you should do it, but honestly, I don't. If you're torquing something consistently down, I think it's just fine. Sometimes I believe it's different ways of torque things are better. But there'll be a million opinions on that. Make sure there's a lot of lines, right? Yep. Okay. Make sure they're aligned. Now we just gotta get this back on here, get some more lube behind me. Now is there, the, the cam, does it have to be in a specific uh, yep. place? And it is because, see how it's got that wide tooth? Right. That puts it right where it needs to be. Gotcha. On top? Yep. And, and then what that, about the crank? The, the, it's so got that flat, flat on top, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so they, they are positioned so you can't mess them up. Just make sure those two dots are aligned. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. You know, so that's what we're gonna do now. Just gonna wait till you look away again. Two falls on there. So now it's still good. Got it, nice. So now I'm going to Torque the top gear. All, all cleaned up. It's coming together, guys. It's coming together. Can't wait. Like I said, next time, uh, this will be pretty much the end of this video when, when he torques those bolts down. Then when we come back, we'll show you guys the, the uh, cylinders, um, the new pistons, Dave putting everything back on together the heads back on top um, and then we'll see if we have enough time um, could be probably until the next time when I come back that uh, we get the bike up and running now these here use red lock type That one used the red? Yes. These two bolts get red. Okay. Torque to 34 foot pounds. 34? Yep. Cool. No, it's not too tight. I figure it would be tighter than that, no? That's all she needs. But I guess the way it rotates, they don't back out or anything, right? Yeah. Bottom one, I go 24. Gotcha. So now, you're gonna see my little sliver from last time I'll go in there. Uh -huh. Is that rocking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it not like it? some new stuff? And it's 
just can't come out of here. Because the boat covers it? Yeah. Cool. There you go. And then it just snaps off and stays in there, right? That's it. Nice. Just break it off. And now zero play, right? Zero play now. So otherwise the timing will be off, right? It does it does move a little bit. Uh -huh. Otherwise it moves very, very minimal. Yeah. But that's your that's how all your sprockets normally are, they're that sloppy. Right. So you have variations. That's another reason why one tune won't work for another bike, because you have variations in cam oh, timing, right, variations right, everything. True. You can have two identical it's bikes. It's how, how tight and how loose a bike is, right? Right. <laughs> Tensioners, no problem, no issues. No. Yeah, no problems with them at all. Now it's ready for the cover. Lifters, tap it cuffs, and we go to the next step. Awesome. Dave, thanks so much, brother. Appreciate it. So I guess we'll see you on uh, the next one when the parts come in and right. we start building the top back yeah. up, right? Yep. Next time awesome. we're here, we're going to keep going up. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate right. it, man. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great day. You too, buddy. All right, guys. So as you guys seen, we made a lot of progress uh, in the second uh, day um, that I'm here. Um, got the cam in. Awesome. Uh, TTS 250 cam. New SNS. Um, cam plate as well as oil pump so this thing is going to be rocking and the way that Dave puts these things together it's just on the money super super um, you know meticulous about everything and how he does it so I can't wait so we'll see you guys on the next one the next one like I said when I come back he's gonna have the cylinders he's gonna have the pistons and um, he's gonna start putting everything else back together so we'll see you guys on the next video take care guys